everybody, welcome to a quick TV review. I'm David Comer. And I'm Dave Herndon. And, and we have to talk Sons of Anarchy. Uh, we haven't done a TV review in forever, but uh, we were chatting at our desks and midway I just like, hey, stop. We gotta, we gotta devote this stuff right on tape. Last night's episode was gonzo, Dave. What do you make of it? Well, I'm still processing everything really. Like, um, for starters, like I haven't enjoyed the first couple episodes of the season as much as I hoped I would. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, with that one episode, I'm back, I'm in, and I wish it were Tuesday. <laughs> uh, well, we saw the death of Special Agent Torek, retired. <laughs> now he really is. Uh, that was that was unforeseen with I Otto. Didn't see that and coming. Otto goes out in a blaze of glory. Um, and really, I mean, they'd almost exhausted Otto, I think, in general. But uh, but so we get some resolution there. But the but I think really things are still set in motion as far as the investigation off the guns, as we see from next week. But um, with oh. Sheriff uh, Eli Roosevelt looking into it at the behest of CCH Pounder, um, but playing the DA. But I don't know. I mean, where, where do you go from here? Obviously, you've got things escalating with the Irish. You have the um, the Nazi uh, Aryan thing come well, to an end. This definitely felt more like either like a mid-season or a complete season finale than the third episode of the season. Right. Um, but just wow. First of all, early on, Tig didn't die, and yet bought Jax's explanation of why he like had him sitting there waiting for the guys that tried to kill him before to come kill him again. Mm -hmm. Just like, oh, I forgot to send the prospects, and he bought it. I was disappointed that, uh, according to August, that uh, it was just a test. I mean, they had been hellbent for leather to, to, to kill him. And uh, and I, not to say that he eventually might not buy the farm, but I thought that, was, that the fact that the, all these threats have been so hollow over the last season and a half. You now, granted, if Damon Pope were still alive, maybe Tig would be dead. Well, and I definitely didn't want to see Tig go. But at the same time, I understood why they were getting rid of him, or at least I thought they were getting rid of him. And they really played it up as he, he kind of went off the wire when after watching his daughter die. Mm -hmm. And I was okay with him going. Well, then killing the Persian porn slinger, uh, the, the extreme porn, uh, torture porn guy, uh, that was pretty interesting. Uh, he got kind of a yellow bath. Uh, <laughs> and and you know I was okay with I was okay with them getting rid of Tig at that point. Right, right. And, but this, Tig's death has gonna have to mean something. It's going to have to come at a big moment. But he is so broken as a character and exhausted. I think so. It's going to happen. I think this season. The the big thing I was a little surprised with last night is that Happy wasn't on the episode at all. Bobby, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Bobby Ellis just gone from the episode, yet his storyline wasn't resolved. He never did really form the nomads and leave. Mm -hmm. Although Jack's already pretty much written him off. He hasn't even counted him among the members. And but, now with Phil gone, if Bobby's not a member, do they have enough to even have a charter? That's right. There's another death. Phil, the big guy, uh, formerly known as a prospect. I'm, Gets a I'm, bullet in the head, courtesy of the Irish. I'm shocked he lasted this long for, from the moment they brought him in. Mm -hmm. I thought he was just, you know, a walking dead waiting waiting to be a casualty. And he's been, what, four, four, four and a half seasons? He's been like the uh, the Star Trek red shirt that made good, you know? Uh, the the Cole Meany, almost, if you will. <laughs> but never got <laughs> the full treatment at the end that Colm did. But, uh, but seriously, that extra guy that just hangs around, hangs around, but uh, obviously it was not, never in the cards or in the... Well, and to they totally it. mitigated him this year. He's had, what, three lines of dialogue before yesterday? Oh, uh, okay. All right. And yesterday they finally started to play him up, and then all of a sudden one scene later, bang. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, this, this, this show is just huge. It's out of control. Uh, I didn't mind them not referring back to Bobby Elvis. There was really nowhere to even go. They were just jam-packing everything in there. And... Um, well, and I don't know about you, but I'm loving the fact they've went to 90-minute episodes this year. Love it. I, I didn't know of it. I, I kind of stay up on the news of the show, but I, I knew they were going to do a 90-minute pilot or premiere. Mm -hmm. But the fact that every episode's been 90 minutes so far, it's kind of shocked me a little bit, but I've right. been loving it. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it's great, and I think um, it gives you the time and space to tell things. I haven't really thought that things were stretched out that long. But um, but i got to say, Special Agent Torque retired. Uh, he's been like the whole supervillain status was kind of we, we joke about Big Jim on Under the Dome, but Torek was really kind of getting to that level, especially after killing of the prostitute, and uh, the whole it was just 
the whole way that went down and the whole planting of the evidence, which thankfully Sheriff Eli Roosevelt never went for. I love Rockman Dunbar. Yes. Shout out to you. But yeah, um, yeah, true that. But I don't think that's really headed anywhere, um, personally, unless he holds it as a leverage over Jax. But again, you're never going to be able to blackmail him. Um, but I think he would know that by now. No. Well, and, you know, leading back into his death, uh, Torque's death, retired, um, I didn't see it. I, I knew he was going to die before the season was over just because mm -hmm. that's kind of what happens all the time. Mm-hmm. That they ki they've killed off almost every season big bad, mm -hmm. except for uh, the X Files guy whose name is escaping me at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, can't remember his real name or his character's name now. <laughs> former member of the Aryan Nation, right? Former crack dealer, former everything. Yes. Now married to a Mexican. Right. I want right. to know where that's going. I mean, right. personally, I have no problem with it, but you go from being an Aryan to marrying a Mexican in like a season and a half. We found Jesus. He did say that. Yeah, but I just I don't know where they're going with that. And she was a babe. Uh, other other than like for this one episode, because like they basically wiped out the Aryan Nation in Southern California now. Well, at least in Charming, in the, in the huge burb of Charming. But you have to think this is going to have to go somewhere with the, the debts that Clay's ringing up in prison. And by the way, like at what point do you guys do they just not even care? Why why does he want August's um, you know collection of contacts? to keep him alive. Or maybe it was more of an, a thing where it happened on Clay's end and not Jax's. I don't understand why it's important to keep Clay around at this point. Well, I I thought that Jax was keeping Clay just for the Irish connection until mm -hmm. they were finally able to make a clean clean break. And obviously he was going to sell out, potentially, in turn state's evidence, so I guess there's that. But at this point, I really don't know what Jax is keeping him around for. Clay is the ultimate good guy gone bad. Well. Bad, bad, good guy gone worse. Uh, yeah, I like it. How, however you want to word that. But and he's always, and there's always going to be that question out there: Will he sell you down the river eventually, if not now or tomorrow? And we know he will. He's not afraid to do it. He's done it in the past. Right. So why are we? They keeping him around, other than you know, Ron Perlman is a big name for the show. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And I, I would have to imagine something's going to come to a head. Obviously, with with Jax's kid. And uh, and uh, Drama De Mateo or whatever, um, who looks so much better than her old druggy days in season one. Uh, but her and uh, Maggie Siff uh, played Tara. Something's happening with that. Obviously, it's more like it seems like there's an escape hat plan coming about with well, getting the kids away from Jax. And, and remember, Tara did file for a divorce. Right, right. Jax just doesn't know it yet. That's true. Spoilers. So something's, uh, something's going on with them. That's got to play out. We've got the Irish connection with the guns. Something's got to happen with that. You were excited about Robert Patrick and what role he's going to have. Well, um, even more excited because they didn't put him in any of the previews. And it's not on his IMDb page. Like, it's like they were keeping it a secret and then just bam, he's there. He was at the premiere, so... But it wasn't, it wasn't hinted that he was going to be in the show. Just that all of a sudden, bam, he's there. Right. And that's, of course, after we lost Dave Navarro a couple weeks ago. Um, I, I love that they, they, they're they bringing in these, you know, bigger names, but they're not giving them big roles. They're not advertising. It's just like, hey, they're here. Mm -hmm. uh, a la a few seasons ago, Stephen King. Mm -hmm. Still one of the best cameo appearances on the show. One of the best. Indeed. Um, but, you know, sticking with this season, specifically this episode, I absolutely loved it. Definitely the best episode so far this year. Hey, I'm an unabashed Suns fan. I will go on record as saying it's one of the top two or three shows on television uh, in total right now. And uh, I, I thought I, I love the hour and a half. So I really hope it continues. And um, I, I just can't wait to see where this goes. Yeah. Well, this is the first season I've been watching live. Everything else I've caught up, you know caught up on DVD or Netflix. And I got to tell you, it sucks. In the past, I've been able to just like wait until the DVD comes out, give myself a weekend, and watch it all, and you know, like a marathon, a, mm -hmm. a mini series, if you will. Now having to wait seven days in between episodes, it's killing me. Welcome to the club. <laughs> um, overall, this episode, obviously, getting you know, ten out of ten, five stars, how whatever rating you want to give it, but. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they can get any better than this, unfortunately. Hopefully they can keep it at this level. And the only thing about making the Irish, the uh, the, the big bad, so to speak, 
I've always hated some of those story connections, going back to season three even, uh, going back to Ireland and the Irish chapter, and just the, how much the IRA holds sway over the club and charming. I just had a hard, it's just, it's always been kind of one of the only real weak spots, I think, in the history of the show that, that you've, I've kind of had just, you just tolerate just because everything else is so awesome. And I really hope that we come to a good conclusion with that and maybe they can kind of um, take care of that problem and they do it in a cool way because really I'm all kind of bored of the Irish because over the years they've always just been kind of looming, it's like a dark cloud and they're always kind of there and there's always that influence but nothing really ever comes of it except for that horrible trip to Ireland season three which I like to forget even happened. Yeah, well, eventually Jax is going to have to say enough is enough. Just tell the Irish hands off and be done with it. Hands off. Get it. See the end of there. Spoilers. All right. Well, uh, we're going to check back intermittently with Sons, maybe even some other shows we like. Leave us a comment below. Let us know what you thought.